Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is the two weeks uh, mark of the Expendables Go to Hell graphic novel Indiegogo campaign, and I got a big announcement, is that we've got the Dave Dorman uh, hardcover art reveal. Very exciting. This one, I had a, I mentioned it a couple days ago, is that we were kind of full up on uh, covers, and then Chuck said, uh, Hey, uh, uh, Dave Dorman wants to do a cover, and I said, "Oh, that's so great! We're all we're all full up. I mean, you know, definitely. Let's let's talk on next time." And then, like a day or two later, <laughs> Chuck's like, uh, "Dave, you know, Dave knows that you said you were full up, but he just thought he'd show you this." To which I was like, "All right, let's let, let let's talk." So, um, since I'd already set up, you know, this one that said, uh, "What is it called?" All five uh, books plus pinups. That's you know the soft cover version of the book. I was like, well, we got to do something for this. It can't just be a poster or something like that, even if it's like a print. And I was like, hardcover. We got to do a hardcover. So this is going to be the cover of the hardcover. The other thing is that for people who did the uh, Stallone signatures, um, that was, you know, limited 25. I was like, we can't just give them a soft cover. Like, it's got to be something awesome. So it's going to be uh, a hardcover, my first hardcover uh, book that I've uh, produced. So I'm very, very excited for that. I put that as the feature. Um, it's going to be a hardcover book plus uh, a pinup of uh, this art. So I'm very excited about that. If, if you're like, Dave Dorman, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, well, have you seen, like... Uh, anything Star Wars <laughs> from the last like 30 years. So the thing I probably know him for the most is he did the uh, the Star Wars Dark Empire from uh, Dark Horse back in the 1990s. That was when um, Dark Horse kind of like, it was weird, like Star Wars kind of just fell down the memory hole almost. Like it, the, the last movie came out in 1983. They had some Ewok movies and I think like 84 and 85. There was a couple cartoons and then there's this Kind of nothing. Like they were going to do some special editions, you know, fix the special effects uh, in, in the 90s. But yeah, so they're like, Star Wars? That's like a thing? Um, so that's what that's where I he first got on my radar screen. So he's like a he's like a, a classic. And then he was talking about he was telling me that uh, George Lucas has actually bought some of his original. So there also is, is the original at the at the bottom. It's a, it's very much a premium. <laughs> it's uh, uh, but um, it's gonna be worth it. This is, I, I had him give me all the. I don't want to click on it um, because it might show my. Does it show my information? Um, but it's like a, a oil painting on a on a gessoed artboard. He, it's all the you know very specific um, technical specifications for you know what this is. You know some high end uh, art. So I'm very uh, proud of that. And then what else? We have all kinds of art stuff here. So I got this, some nice um, digital art of uh, cuffs. The other day, I, th I thought it was very cool, very uh, stylish. I like the I like this uh, interesting take on him. And then I thought we'd go through this. So is it gonna play? Is it not gonna play? Is it don't, don't play? No, no, you're playing. Quit playing. Um, so this is, um, I think, Graham Nolan posted this on Facebook uh, last week, and I was like, "Hey, can you send? Do you, can you send me that uh, video file? Because I think I can get a good video out of this." So what this is is page. <laughs> the numbering on Expendables Go to Hell is a little. It's confusing to me. <laughs> I will figure it out by the time we do the print file. But there was originally like a fifty-page main story, and now we have three side quests that kind of weave in and out. Uh, for example, where Barney gets this um, uh, spear is in one of the side quests that I wrote. So it's all it's it's very confusing. People are like, give me numbers. I go, ah, okay. But I think this is about um, two thirds of the way through uh, the story. So um, let's just get right to it. I'm hoping I've never done this where it's like a video. I'm hoping it captures everything like my my audio. So. Um, Take it away. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna comment as it, it goes on. So, okay, so first of all, this is digital art. Um, not trying to be condescending, but 
you know, some people are very, very new to this. So digital is done on computer. Now you can do on physical medium, like obviously with the Dave Dorman original, you know, uh, art oil painting, that's all physical. This is done all digital. Now you see there what looks like an artboard. Um, and, you know, artists do this, you know, for their comfort. You know, also you want to know what the live area is. Obviously, when you say penciler, that's not going to be on the page. So it'll be focused. Um, that's what the different um, lines are for, the, the dash line and then the solid line and then this other dash line. Uh, you can do things full bleed where they go all the way to the edge of the page. But the file actually extends out a little bit because, you know, uh, printing is still, you know, physical. So it's going to be very, very close, especially with modern printing. But, you know, the, the page is going to be cut just slightly different. I mean, just microscopically or, you know, millimeterally, um, sub millimeter, very, very small. Um, so, uh, but the interesting thing about digital is they carry over a lot of the things from physical. Obviously, you have a an image of a physical board with the, the, the limits on there. And then you do blue line. Why do you do blue line? Because when, you know, if you do a, a physical board, you can draw in this blue pencil called non-repro blue. And when you scan it on, you know, some scanners with certain settings, the blue will completely disappear. Um, I've tried that. I've liked it. Um, I've also tried just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm about to do um, some original art for a cover and uh, it's not going to be blue. <laughs> it's going to be, I actually got a whole plan. I'm very excited about it. It's like I'm drawing in a Frank Miller style. At first it's like, I'm going to take a long time. I was like, no, no, Frank Miller does not take a long time. He will knock something out in a day and if it's not good, he'll just rip it in half and then try it again the next day. So I already got the layout digitally and then I'm going to like draw these like like a grid over the digital and then I'm, I'm going to use that as a guide, but it's not going to be traced. It's going to be its own thing. I'm, I'm very, very excited about this. So uh, that's why he's doing this in blue and that's why it looks like it's a physical piece of paper, but it's it's a digital, digital file. So what he did right here is he did a layout and he's been doing this for 30 years. So, you know, he he gets to do a lot of shorthand. He, he knows, you know, basic storytelling. You're going to start with a a wide shot that establishes where the characters are in the environment. Then you can move uh, closer. And uh, so he doesn't really need to get that de detailed. And you see that from artists of his caliber. So he's basically going into a more defined version of the drawing here with this, uh, I don't know what you call, magenta tone. And obviously, again, his video is, is sped up from the time of the actual drawing. But you're seeing there that this um, this uh, hellscape is getting uh, more detail. You're seeing, seeing things in the far background. You're seeing the hint of the horizon line. Can you, if you can see my cursor right here. So this is something interesting that, that uh, a lot of artists do. They will put reference on one of the layers. Layers can be hidden. Layers are effectively clear. So. A layer will not have anything on it until you put something on it, even if that is just you're going to fill it with the color white so it looks like a piece of paper and then you're going to draw on top of it. So a digital fire file is made out of at least one layer, but usually multiples. So you can hide and, and unhide them. So he's got a little bit of reference, like what kind of, you know, uh, craggy mountain he wants. He's also got a, a samurai there. So uh, I've also seen artists put the script on a file. Um, so uh, I've noticed I, some some writers, I think, I don't, uh, I don't remember if Chuck did, did this or not, but I've actually seen it where every page of the script will be one page of art. And that really helps where the artists, they can do stuff like this, just put the, uh, the script on one uh, layer. So again, more detail, pretty much what I would call this, you know, this is enough pencils since he's inking himself. This is all he really needs. Nice use of uh, a negative or the, uh, you know, the white pen. To, if you saw putting the lava on this uh, volcano in the background. And he's doing uh, Barney with the, the spear that he picked up in mine. You see what he did there? He started drawing it. The layout had it a little farther down and then he realized 
he didn't want Barney cut off, so what you do is you just do a selection on the uh, layer. You just uh, do this like lasso tool, and then you can move it upwards without moving the rest of the drawing. Again, some detail. Really, all he needs to go to uh, ink right now. On the samurai, got a nice, uh, nice use of foreground and uh, middle ground and background on that second panel. Now he's doing a real action one. He's switching it up. This really shows off the uh, this, the spear. You can see the spear right here gets its own silhouette distinct uh, from the arm, the blood coming out, and Barney. These are some nice. Uh, these are some nice lines of force and action. Got some effects line. This is the classic thing to do in comics. You do all these lines pointing to the focal point. And then this is uh, after the kill. It's a pretty good one-shot kill. Oh, and what do we got there? We got a, uh, I got a helicopter. So this is going to be a uh, uh, kind of one of the mini bosses coming up, although so now he's going straight to inking. And he's go he's looking back at his reference. I'm guessing for the light sources where to put the, you know, the 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 heavy uh black patches on there as opposed to the uh the bright patches right here. I love stuff like this. This is so fun for me to watch. Yeah, I could just, <laughs> I'm not even talking, I'm just watching him draw. Just You're seeing this thing go from a layout to some loose pencils to a finalized drawing. I love his art style. It's one of the great things you see when someone is drawing for so long is they're, you know, they're like a samurai. They're not doing all these crazy windmills. They just know that one strike, that one stab, that one slash to do. It's, it's almost impressionistic. Impressionistic means you're not literally drawing like every little rock and pebble. You're just kind of moving around with the brush and giving the, the impression of it. Like, I really like that smoke. And you see the smoke is completely different than his layout. Nice hatching effects in the sky, very moody. Now you got this uh, rock monster. It's nice, very lumpy vertebra on the back. Little foreground uh, rock. And you can even see, now obviously this is sped up, you could, but you could see as it gets smaller, he actually slowed down. He drew basically this entire rock monster, which was very impressionistic. Uh, but then you see that it was the same amount of time just to do you know, the top of Stallone. He's got a lot of the details in his um, his uh, battle gear. I actually uh, bought Graham uh, at least two, maybe three. They were very expensive because the movie came out like 10 years ago. So uh, I, I found him some really expensive action figures on Amazon, I believe, and sent them to him. So he had those uh, for reference. Just like a, a photograph where maybe the foreground or the background is out of focus and the midground is, your eye is going to be drawn to what has more detail. Barney has much more detail than uh, the rock monster and the rock, so you're you're going to focus on him, which is you know perfect because he's the he's the lead. Peeking again at the uh, the reference. I really love, uh, there, there's something about where the way artists draw rocks, I just love it. It's that very impressionistic, fast, you know, uh, Bob Ross, happy little clouds type of thing. So you see here a wealth of detail on the hero, and then look how much faster the villain gets drawn. Because this guy is, you know, he's just he just needs to convey threat, cool, scary, weird. Um, but as even in his death, the focus is still the hero um, defeating him. Some really, really nice, like, uh, contrasty shading on this rock monster. I really like the, uh, the giant distended forearms. 
This is a classic thing. I'm going to stop because I don't know how fast he's drawing. This is a visual medium. Kind of perfected ideal forms which are achieved in art or sometimes in real life as you know you've seen Stallone get an incredible shape for uh, you know uh, Rocky Rambo Expendables movies is it symbolizes goodness and purity and heroism it's one of those things you know what I mean uh, a, a hero with broader shoulders feels like more of a hero it doesn't matter if he saves the same amount of people the broad sh shoulders symbolize strength he's a hero so obviously this is strength for good these type of things matter more of the effects lines some of the brick uh, effects flying off of this rock monster then we get a nice we get a nice turning of the samurai to uh, see the helicopter over there oh, I really like these uh, cross hatching effects on the uh, rock Love it. I, I love the little rips in his uh, his t-shirt showing some battle damage. I gotta say, seeing this being drawn, I have even a greater you know uh, appreciation for Graham's work. I really love rocks and rubble and mountains and cliffs. I don't know why. It's just so pleasing to, to look at and watch it being drawn. So now he's uh, going, giving some more detail to the, uh, and even more, it looks like more hatching. And there we go. Is that the end? Okay, so that's the end. So, so then what he did is he took away the uh, panel borders, which is, oh, no, now he's uh, doing some more. So, um, let me see if I go back to the beginning. Does it have it there? Yeah, so it looks like, uh, you know, when we get them, it has the panel borders exact and it doesn't have that magenta. But that was a good uh, a view of uh, a page being uh, completely, you know, you know, almost completely drawn. Very, very exciting. So once again, and I'm going to go back. Expendables go to hell. We are two weeks in. we got 117000 353 dollars we got 1524 backers 16 days left on the initial campaign uh, uh, featured is it just lets you put it at the top you can have any of them being featured so since it's a new one I'm putting it right there oh I've already sold two and I haven't even oh no I mentioned it uh, uh, on a live stream just before I recorded this so um, I would say so you got the hardcover this one below that's the basic book tier that's going to have kelsey's cover on there then we have all the different uh variants of the soft cover again hardcover featured then we got uh these are the soft covers trade paperback it's going to be around 90 to 100 pages um kelsey for the main one billy tucci variant uh we should be uh, getting that reveal uh, probably within a week um, mine also probably a week, possibly less. I might be doing it um, uh, on Monday uh, because everything's closed um, for the federal holiday. Uh, uh, Jason Johnson, uh, Renzo Rodriguez variants. Then we added the T-shirt. We've got Chromium. Again, this Chromium is about 30 pages. It's going to show off the black and white art, like this fantastic art by uh, Aaron Alfici, uh, as long as uh, with Grams, and it's, it's basically going to be like a a director's commentary slash making of. This is my first uh, doing something with Chromium. Uh, two pack, that's, that's, anyone can order it, but it's two versions of the main cover. And this is for people overseas. Get with a friend and it, it helps it out. It, it makes the, uh, the postage more affordable. Here's t-shirt, book, and pinup. Uh, the the t-shirt's gonna be this, um, you know, the main uh, promotional art. Uh, and it's just it's just going to be Barney Ross. Um, it's not going to have the bit where he says, uh, I'm going to hell because pe some people pointed out that they wouldn't be able to wear it everywhere comfortably if it had a curse word on there. So then we got a sketch that's uh, by me. Sketch, uh, book, and pinup. All five books, uh, there's a tier for that. Uh, we have the uh, Jason Johnson original art, the Dave Dorman art. Um, uh, and then my art is uh, sold out. And we will have uh, uh, Billy Tucci's when he finishes his on here. So, okay, so anyway, 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have more new and old comic reviews up uh, all this weekend. Thanks. Bye.